areas and spend more time out of the water. Until 360 million years ago, they make the land their home. It's from a creature like this that all four-legged vertebrates will evolve. Dinosaurs, birds, mammals, and eventually you and me. We've come a long way, from a lump of burning rock and dust to a blue-green planet bursting with life. There are still no humans, but there are fish, plants, and this. It's a dragonfly, a dragonfly the size of an eagle. This giant is called Meganeura. What were once legs have evolved into wings, extending the dragonfly's hunting territory over a vast area. There are millipedes, spiders, all sorts of bugs down there. These creatures, called arthropods, were among the very first to set foot on land. They've already been around for hundreds of millions of years. They look almost identical to the bugs that invade our homes today. Except for one big difference. Like Meganeura, they're monsters. We've stumbled into a lost world of giants, where millipedes are two meters long and scorpions the size of wolves. All the oxygen in the atmosphere allows their respiratory systems to be more efficient and frees up space for their bodies to grow. A lizard-like creature called Hylonymus. The creatures we've seen so far laid their eggs in the water. But these eggs contain all the water and nutrients the developing Hylonymus needs. The babies are growing in their own self-contained pond. The egg is a major evolutionary breakthrough. Now animals can leave the water behind and conquer the land. This baby Hylonymus will lead the advance. It's a new kind of creature, a reptile. Inevitably, with life comes death. There's so much dead plant matter, it builds up and decays into dense, soggy layers. Over hundreds of millions of years, rocks will cover these layers. Heat from the Earth's core and pressure from the overlying rocks will transform the layers of dead plants into seams of coal. Each lump of coal we burn today to warm our homes and fire our power stations is made of plants that died 300 million years ago. Amidst the decay, hidden from sight, life is stirring. Soon seeds will germinate, plants will grow, and this wasteland will live again. Life seems to have conquered the planet.
A herd of creatures graze the Siberian plains. They're not dinosaurs. They won't set foot on Earth for at least another 20 million years. But they're big. Evolution has taken a huge leap forwards. The small lizards we saw earlier are now giant reptiles. These are scutosaurs, the distant relatives of turtles. They're plant eaters. And if the plant eaters look this tough, the carnivores must be seriously mean. It's a Gorgonopsid, a perfectly engineered prehistoric killing machine. The Gorgonopsid's saber teeth have wounded the Scutosaur. The predator is watching as its prey grows weak from blood loss. Until... Hold on. It's backing off. Something strange is happening. The ground is getting hot. There must be enormous pressure beneath the surface. lava. But this isn't one single volcano. The entire landscape is erupting. It's a flood basalt eruption. A massive plume of mantle is rising up from deep inside the earth, pushing molten rock out through fissures in the earth's crust. The lush paradise is now a lifeless hell. The scutosaurs and the gorgonopsids are dead. They're the first casualties in the greatest mass extinction the world has ever seen. The Permian extinction. side of the continent of Gondwana, it's as if nothing happened. Snow. But the temperature is about 20 degrees Celsius. It's not snow. It's ash. Fallout from the eruption some 16,000 kilometers away. The ash burns, suffocates, and kills animals around the world. The atmosphere is full of sulfur dioxide from the eruptions. As it rains, the gas turns to sulfuric acid and burns everything it falls on. At first, it seemed like this was a local disaster. But now it's gone global. The Siberian eruptions in 